In today's video, we're going to be using a knurled texturing tool like this to be making some designs in wood on the wood lathe. Welcome, welcome. One of the ways that you can spice up your wood turning and make it interesting is by the use of texturing. And I've been playing around with this knurled texturing tool that I just got. And it's called a knurled texturing tool because it has this knurling bit in the end that was originally used in machining. In this video, I wanna show you how I would use this tool to make a few different elements that will hopefully help you in your wood turning. I'm Jason Geyser, and this is Geyser Wood Turner. Let's texture some projects. Today we're going to start out with texturing a spinning top and I'm using hard maple here and we're going to set the tool rest far enough away that that cutter head will clear and what I want to do is I want to press it up to the wood, get it rotating and then I'm going to bring it across and you can just try different configurations here but we're going to press it to the wood get that cutter head rotating and then I'm just going to rotate the tool and bring it across and hopefully what we get is a nice spiral and then we'll just lift it off of the wood. Yeah, I like that. That's pretty good. So one of the things I like to do is accent it and so I'm going to use a point tool here and we're just going to make some grooves. We'll put one here and that's just going to define where the end is at. I can't really see where the other end is at, so I'm going to stop the lathe and then we'll use the point tool there and just put some lines. What that does is just kind of help define where your detail is at. Then you can take a bristle brush or a toothbrush or something like that. Just kind of run it in there to clean out all the dust that the cutter has left. Now when we move on to the upper side of the top that you're going to see, there are some challenges and one of them is that it's really hard to get in there and get your cutter head in place because the tool is a little bit bigger than what we want it to be. So you have to be careful with the upper side here to make sure it's not too flat. You kind of have to angle it up a little bit so that you have room to put this cutter head onto the top. Either that or you're going to have to cut away a little bit more material so you have a little bit more clearance. So I'm going to rest the cutter head on there and then rotate it out just like we did before and hopefully we get a similar spiral pattern. And I'm turning somewhere around a thousand RPM because the RPM does matter as far as um, what kind of pattern you get in this configuration. So when you're cutting with it sideways it'll make a larger pattern if it's going slower and kind of a smaller pattern if it's going faster. So I'm going to take the point tool and just define the edges just like I did before. Just by putting some grooves in. So that looks pretty good right there. We'll go ahead and make one more groove. And then sometimes I like to use a little bit of sandpaper and you want to just barely even touch this. This is a 180 grit and I'm just kind of skimming over the surface. I don't want to take out any of that texture and you'll see I don't use it very long. I just use it a little bit and set it down. I'll try and burnish it with some shavings a little bit and then just brush any dust again back out of those grooves. So then we'll skip ahead to when the top is done and ready to put some finish on it. And I like to use an artisan dye from Craft Supplies USA and it's an alcohol based wood dye. So it dries really quickly and has a lot of long lasting color which is really nice. So we're just going to spin it and I think I'm only going about 300 RPM or something like that. We'll just put some of that dye onto a towel and then work it into the wood and you can work it all the way down into your texturing pattern or you can leave it out. It depends on what type of finish you're going to put over this die when you're done and I like to use a liming wax 
Now, a liming wax is a special white wax used for special effects in wood finishing, and it goes into the wood and stays white in any grooves or any open grain. And so what it'll do here, it's going to go into our texture and just kind of accent it and bring out the grooves that are in it and it'll go over the wood dye a little bit and lighten it as we go so this is especially works well on darker wood dyes so let's go ahead and put some wax on and then we'll get a clean piece of the towel and we'll take the wax off so wax on wax off I guess Daniel Sun. and it'll just wipe away any of that excess wax that's on there and we'll see how that worked in accenting our texture from our texturing tool I really like how that really accented the spiral in this one but you can try this in lots of different ways and if you don't like the texturing pattern you can always cut it off and try again on this top I'm going to try a couple of different patterns and I have the tool tip to the side at an angle a little bit and then bring it bringing it across the wood and you'll see I just kind of get some different accents to the wood we're going to use a green dye on this top and then put on the liming wax and just see what happens So once the wax is wiped off, I've got two different patterns and not quite as much of a spiral, but more grooved lines, but I like them both and they both spin really well. So here we have a happy little acorn and I'm going to try a different texturing method on here and I want to make sure that my tool will clear enough that I can get some texture on the cap of this acorn. And so what I'll do is I'll spin that up, and I think I'm going about 1,000 or 1,200 RPM. And then I'll bring the tool to rest onto the cap of the acorn, and just get it spinning. And then I'm just going to press. I'm not going to drag it across the piece of wood. I'm just going to press and let it make indentations into the piece of wood. And I'll actually get a defined pattern here. I want to keep bringing that across the cap so I'll press it a little bit more here at first and try and get that pattern deeper and deeper and you'll notice that I'm hitting the side just a little bit here and that's okay because I can cut that away later I can reshape it however I want so I have the pattern from the first pressing here and then what I want to do is just kind of slightly move it over and engage it where that pattern matches up and then rotate it around and keep pressing until I create more of the pattern and I want to make sure that that cutter head is lined up and spinning in the same grooves that it was before and you can see that I can just kind of extend this pattern across the cap of my acorn the first time that I saw this tool used was by its inventor and the inventor of this type of tool is Joe Wagner he's a man from Utah and he came up with this to make the cap on the top of his acorn ornaments so it was kind of a sim similar project that he was doing this tool is not Joe Wagner's tool I couldn't find Joe Wagner's tool available this one is by Ron Brown and I'll put some links in the description for some of the items and tools that I'm using today so if you want to go check that out, then you can. So we're just about done with this pattern here. And we'll extend it over just as far as I can. And you'll see on this last little pass that I'll be kind of hitting the stem of this acorn with the tool a little bit. And that's okay, because if I damage it at all with that corner, then I can always cut it away. I need that stem to be just a little bit thinner anyways when I'm done. So that looks like a pretty good pattern. I'm going to go ahead and just bring that point tool in again just like I did on the tops 
and we'll define a line just a little bit above and below where our pattern starts and I like to do that mostly just because it's a cool way to define where your pattern starts and stops and it gives your eyes just something to look at and it's something just a little bit extra okay and I have this line here that I burned into there with the corner of the texturing tool I'm just gonna cut that away and we'll just kind of smooth up and define the shape of this acorn and make it look the best that we can and then I'm gonna finish my walnut acorn with some walnut oil and I'll go ahead and just wipe it onto that texture and then I'll kind of pour some down into the grooves here and there so that I can work that into the texture and make it look really awesome we're going to try this pattern on one more type of project and it's a bowl and I haven't hollowed out the inside of the bowl yet because I want this to be as stable as possible as I press this tool into the rim of this bowl and we're going to do the same type of texturing pattern that we did on the acorn and you'll see that the grain of this figured poplar that is just beautiful and I don't really need to accent it but sometimes you just want to add a little bit something extra to make it an interesting piece so we're going to go ahead and just press and make a pattern and then we'll just line it up and press next to it and we'll just keep going with that pattern and make a small band across the outside rim of this bowl And just like we did on the acorn, we'll line it up and let that cutter head begin to rotate and then start to press. And we'll bring that over just a little ways and I like where that's at. Don't want to make this too wide. And a little bit closer you'll be able to see just kind of what that pattern looks like and we'll go ahead and use the point tool again to just kind of define the edges and this time the point tool will have two purposes because on this one I'm going to use a little bit different technique to bring out that pattern and what I'm going to do here is we're going to light up a torch and this is just a propane torch and I'm going to kind of lightly bring that from the side and bring that down close to the wood where it's just going to start to burn it a little bit and you'll see that it kind of burns the outside of the texture and then leaves the inside of the texture a light color which is what I want it to do and so I'll come across the piece of wood and just work my way around and try not to get too much on the edges but it's okay if I do because I'm going to kind of raise this texture pattern up a little bit on the bowl by cutting in on the sides so that I can get rid of any of the edges that I've burned as well as raise the pattern up. And I'll just come in with a spindle gouge and bring it over to the line that I cut in with my point tool. Now you can try this with sandpaper, uh, but I found that it doesn't really remove enough of the burn marks to make that much of a difference but you can raise it up with a tool just fine and it looks wonderful and I hope this video has helped you today and we'll see you soon